how to get access to and practice with Medicare claims data. Have you ever wondered what raw healthcare claims data looks like? Do you want to practice with raw healthcare claims data? Then this video is for you. My name is Dennis Arendel, and I am a health economist. In order to facilitate research and development with their healthcare claims data, a federal health insurance program in the United States called Medicare has created a large practice data set. This data set is called the Medicare Claims Synthetic Public Use Files. On the cms.gov website, you can download samples of this data set in small bits and pieces in CSV files. However, there is a much more pragmatic way to access this large data set, and all you need is a Gmail account and some basic knowledge of SQL, that is, Structured Query Language. So why Gmail? Well, it has to do with the fact that Google has created a product called BigQuery. This is a cloud-based data warehouse solution. In order to promote and market BigQuery, Google has included some large public datasets in BigQuery, essentially to demonstrate how BigQuery is capable of dealing with files of enormous size. One of these datasets contains the full Medicare practice dataset and replicates an actual data warehouse, including dimension and fact tables. For that reason, BigQuery is perfect to practice using claims data in a data warehousing setting. Let's check it out. All right. The first thing we want to do is to enter in our Google search engine, BigQuery Sandbox. We are choosing the sandbox option because that will allow us access to BigQuery for free and without having to submit any credit card information. Now it's important here to not click on this option here in the upper right that says get started for free because that will bring us to the trial version of BigQuery in which BigQuery will prompt us to enter credit card information and will provide you with a trial for one year use of BigQuery for free. But we want to use the completely free version that does not require any credit card information, which can be found over here. If you click on go to BigQuery, Now we have to log in with our Gmail credentials. Now we'll just have to select the country and agree with the terms of service. This here is the basic BigQuery interface. Now I'm going to create a new project and I will call this Medicare data.
Personally, I am used to working with BigQuery in a different interface, but of course the choice is yours. So I will be changing this option here and click on disable editor tabs. But this is just my personal preference. It only has to do with the fact that I'm used to working with BigQuery in the other interface. So as you can see, we are still working in BigQuery, but now with a different interface. You can always switch back by clicking on enable editor tabs over here. Now what I want to do is click here on add data and I will select explore public data sets. And as you can see, BigQuery has a whole variety of public data sets that you can practice with. But I'm interested in the ones that have to do with healthcare. And from here, I will select on this data set over here. Now, a lot of public data sets have been added to my interface. So you can see a whole new folder called BigQuery Public Data has been added over here. And I'm going to look for one that has the name CMS in it, which is this one over here. As you can see, there are three different data sets that have the name CMS in them. But the one that contains the actual raw healthcare claims data is this one over here. And as you can see, there are many different tables in this particular data set. Let's check out a table called procedure occurrence over here. I can get the schema of this particular table. I can also see the details. As you can see, these files are pretty huge, 18 gigabytes and 280 million rows. I can also preview this file over here. So here we go, the procedure type concept ID, the provider ID, the person ID, the date on which the procedure took place, etc. So it is a very detailed raw healthcare claims data file. And this is our primary fact table. There are also other fact tables. For example, one that has to do with drug use. Here we can see the person ID, the drug concept ID, and the date of the drug use. If you are interested in the dimension table, for example, because we want to know what this particular drug is called, we should go to the dimension table called concept. And in this table that contains the concepts, we can see that there is a concept ID and a concept name. And this concept ID here will allow us to join with our fact table in order to get the names of the particular procedures or drugs. So let's check that again. If I go to the drug era fact table, I will see that there is a concept ID. And this is the column that I will be linking with. Or if I go to the procedure occurrence fact table, I can also see that there is a concept ID here. And this is of course the most common way in which a data warehouse system works. Namely that you have fact tables on the one hand and dimension tables on the other hand. If I want to know more information about the patient, 
I can find that information here in the person ID. But this person ID, I will have to use to look up this particular ID in the dimension table called person. And here we see much more detailed information about each individual person in our database, containing information about their ethnicity, their location, their gender, their birth date, etc. If you want to query any table, all you have to do is click over here, query table, and then you can write a basic SQL script. If you're interested in learning more in-depth information about healthcare claims data, then you should definitely check out my online course about data science for healthcare claims data. This course contains hours of lectures covering both theoretical knowledge as well as hands-on practical activities. Click on the link in the description of this video to access this course. Now let's try a very simple query by using the procedure occurrence fact table. And we want to know which procedures are the most common in our data set. So I'll click here on query table. And I will select the procedure concept ID. And I will also select the date simply because I'm interested in the frequency. So I'm gonna use the date to count the frequency. Okay, let's check out this query. And here we see the results. We can see that this code over here is the most common because it has the highest frequency. But of course, I cannot tell what the name is of this code. And in fact, the name of the codes is not visible in my fact table. As you can see, there are no names of codes in my fact table. And that means that we're going to have to join this fact table with the dimension table called concept ID, which is this table over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add concept name to my query, which is source from a dimension table concept. I'm going to copy paste the concept name over here, comma, concept name. And I'm going to add a join command. The join command will be sourcing the concept table. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to simply change the last part here that contains the name of my table procedure occurrence to concept. And I will give this table here an alias, C. And this one here, I will give an alias, P. And now, I will add over here 
P P and over here C. What I also need to do is to specify what it is being joined on. So I'll add here on, and I will state P procedure ID is, and let me quickly check out what the name is of the concept ID. It's concept ID, easy. So it will be C concept ID. And I'll have to add over here, group by C concept ID. This year actually needs to be concept name and not concept ID. All right, there we have it. Our query is now validated and we can now run it. And there we go. We now have the results of our query that allows us to analyze which codes are the most common and what the frequency is of each code and also what the name is of each code in our query. All right, that was it for this basic introduction to how to use Google BigQuery to access and practice with Medicare claims data. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more in-depth information about healthcare claims data, then you should definitely check out my online course about data science for healthcare claims data. This course contains hours of lectures covering both theoretical knowledge as well as hands-on practical activities. Click on the link in the description of this video to access this course.